when it was at its worst and he was really poorly with this heart condition, it was absolutely heartbreaking because we thought we were going to lose him. We were, the vet said, you know, just get, take him home and love him, which is very hard to hear when, you know, he's such a precious little thing. some of those features start to compromise the welfare of the dogs and as such that clearly is an issue. It was really she looked like she was going to be sick. She was frothing at the mouth and she was really she looked like she was having some kind of epileptic fit. From an evolutionary point of view I look at that and say it's an evolutionary dead end. Without human intervention those animals cannot survive. Every pedigree dog in the UK is bred to a breed standard, which controls how a type of dog should look and behave. The organisation that creates the breed standards is called the Kennel Club. The club runs the world-famous dog show Crufts, but it's been highly criticised by organisations such as the RSPCA for allowing its breeding and judging to compromise the health and welfare of pedigree dogs. All pedigree dogs are bred through selective breeding, well, by definition, if you're carrying out selective breeding, you are breeding um, individuals who are closely related to each other genetically because you're starting off with a founder that had that particular variation um, and then you're crossing it and you're, you're essentially doing brother sister matings. And so as a consequence, you have a set of individuals who are all, all more closely related to each other than if you were breeding out um, by, uh, with dogs. Many of the show dogs at Crufts are bred with exaggerated features to please dog show judges. Problems have arisen when people have really wanted to maintain a particular stamp on their offspring and they've started to breed animals very closely together and historically there has been situations of father-daughter matings, mother-son matings, which in itself isn't so much of a problem but when it starts to become very concentrated within a particular gene pool, that's when you start to get real issues. The pug has been bred with its face so squashed that it finds it hard to breathe. This is why pugs often snort and grunt. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel is one of Britain's most popular dogs. With its cute, innocent face and big Bambi eyes, the Cavalier makes the perfect family pet. When Barbara Thomas chose to get a dog for her daughter, she chose a popular little dog with a sweet and loving temperament. At first, Toby was everything Barbara and her daughter Sarah could have wanted. I was so excited when I first got Toby. I was asking my mum for ages and ages for a pet. And so cute when we first got him, he was so tiny. He used to fit in the palm of my hand. He used to carry him around with the palm of my hand. And he was just the smallest thing I've ever seen. And he was really fluffy. I researched the breed, I researched the breeder and I selected this dog because he came from a line which was, I think they were heart checked and eye checked, which is what you had to look out for at the time. And so I thought as long as we had that, then he'd be fine. But that didn't prove to be the case. When he was about six or seven, he began to have symptoms and I didn't know what they were. He used to pour the air by his ear as if he was trying to scratch and miss all the time, especially when he was out for a walk. His back leg was constantly pouring the side of his head. Unknown to Barbara and her family, these were the first signs of a devastating disease that has ruined little Toby's life. About a year ago, um, I found him collapsed and he, I rushed him to the vet and his heart was beating so fast that they thought we were going to lose him. The disease is called syringomyelia and it's caused because the cavalier's head has been bred so small to the breed standards its skull is too small for its brain. Cavalier King Charles Spaniel is a, is a, is a really interesting example of selective breeding almost gone wrong. It's been bred over the last few generations to have a, a very domed head. 
which gives it a very nice little face, almost a very sweet childlike face. And syringomyelia is a particular condition where basically the base of the brain pops out the skull. Syringomyelia was a bit of a shock because it was never heard of when I was researching the breed. It just wasn't anywhere. And then after a few years, it was everywhere. It seemed to have suddenly um, come into the consciousness, really, that this, this disease had suddenly been found in this particular dog. The result of this is excruciating pain and neurological damage. That creates all kinds of issues because there's pressure popped on the brain, it creates various physiological symptoms in the dog. And it's really distressing and apparently an incredibly painful condition. It's estimated that more than half of cavaliers have syringomyelia and according to the RSPCA, the number is on the rise. It's been really unfortunate in the Cavalier King Charles that this has been increasing in occurrence because people have selected these dogs with very small domed heads and the more you select for it, you're actually selecting for a small skull, you're not necessarily selecting for a brain that fits within that skull. It's not just King Cavalier Charles Spaniels that suffer as a result of selective breeding. The bulldog's head in the Kennel Club's breed standards is now so large that pedigree bulldogs can't give birth naturally anymore because the puppy's heads are too big for its mother's cervix. This means that many pedigree bulldogs have to give birth through a caesarean. Not only is this dangerous for the bulldog, but it's dangerous for the puppies as well. Some people argue that if a bulldog cannot give birth naturally, then surely this dog is headed towards extinction. The selective breeding that's actually meant that certain breeds of dogs have these massively enlarged heads and sometimes shoulders as well, which means they, they actually can't give birth naturally because the, the pups themselves literally will get stuck in the birth canal. That's a real issue. Now, as a geneticist, from an evolutionary point of view, I look at that and say it's an evolutionary dead end. Without human intervention, those animals cannot survive. These images show how the size of the bulldog's head has changed over time as a result of selective breeding. Its head is a lot more taller and wider, and its bottom jaw protrudes out of its face, blocking its nose, making it harder for the bulldog to breathe. Selective breeding doesn't just lead to physical problems. Melanie Muir and her family saw the shocking psychological effects on their fox terrier Spotty. We wanted another little fox terrier and this time around we decided right we go for the thoroughbred one. Much to our dismay and excitement we realised that thoroughbreds have got a little bit extra added to them. Previously Melanie owned a crossbreed dog known as a mongrel but she had growing concerns for her new dog Spotty. I mean the main reason what made us realise was something wrong was comparing it to the previous two dogs which maybe we shouldn't have done but it's only in retrospect I realised it's because she's thoroughbred she's got the proper breed in her. Uh, as a puppy she was fine but as she got older we slowly started realising there's a bit of a problem. Things like she started shivering you know for the slightest reason uh, and we realised on a garbage day Wednesday and every Wednesday you know with, without even realising she'd wake up in the morning she'd start with these shiver modes. Spotty was taken to see various vets and dog experts but was told that nothing could be done as her personality was down to the way she had been bred. Oh, and the lady said, no, it's all part of her, that's her coping mechanism. That's her sign that there's something wrong and I need to cope type of thing. So she will quite literally start shaking. And I mean, often it looks like she's having a fit. The condition means that Spotty is constantly in fear and on edge. Melanie and her family have had to adapt their lives in order to make their dogs more comfortable. Spotty has to take lots of medication to calm her down, and it's cost Melanie thousands of pounds. Initially, I think so much the financial cost that, that is what counts. It's more the it's more the emotional impact on us because we thought we had a really you know we thought we had there was something wrong with our dog, and not so much a physical thing. We thought you know it was it was really something more psychological. The unrealistic breed standards controlled by the kennel club are clearly harming some types of pedigree dogs. As seen in Toby's case. Syringomyelia is a devastating disease that is becoming more common in Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. Cavaliers need to be bred with bigger heads to stop these dogs from suffering. The psychological effects of selective breeding are also an issue, as dogs like Spotty live in constant fear. Not only is it an emotional strain for pet owners, but it's costing them thousands of pounds just to keep their dogs alive. It's time that pedigree dogs are bred for their health, not their appearance.